Look at all of my grandis. Look at this, Agent Box Turtle. I think it's gonna start using this little tortoise hide. What do we got here? Did you get caught in there? I think this one just actually likes to go in there. Check this out. Pink belly side neck, making use of every aquatic habitat in the front yard. It's just really cool to see my aquatic turtles have so many different little micro habitats or places to move around. And I just love how life takes hold in these little ponds. Oh man, it's a rainy day here today. Uh, looks like we're gonna have a lot of rain for the next few days. So I wanted to get out while there's a break in the weather, or at least the rain stopped a little bit, and just kind of look around the camp and see what needs doing. And uh, well, I've already seen that this electric fence uh, needs a little help. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm gonna be walking around, checking on all the animals, showing you what do the animals do when it's cooler and a little bit wet. Uh, some of them don't mind, like for example, <laughs> the Heosemis grandis. These guys are amazing. This female right here is just caught red beaked as she was eating a little bit of grass. So they'll come out on land and they'll graze. A lot of the water turtles really don't mind any of the situation that's going on with the water coming from the sky. Cause hey, look, look at this pond. It is filled up. It's looking pretty good. Okay, so first things first, I just repaired this actually last, uh, maybe like four days ago, but the wire snapped again and I'll show you what happens. Maybe some of you farmers out there might know a different trick to help me out. So what happens is you've got this wire and it looks like this is a different type of metal. So what happens is the wire uh, kind of corrodes very quickly. So usually I wrap it around a bunch of times, but now look, unfortunately, this is, I mean, way short, huh? So I'm gonna need to go ahead and get myself situated and really kind of pull it and then untwist it in order to kind of fix what's going on here with, with this wire. But you know what, let's walk over here. Let's just see what's going on. Um, there may be a snag because it shouldn't have been that short. So maybe an animal, which happens from time to time, a raccoon will try and climb over, and before they get zapped, they kind of tear the wire out. But it doesn't look like that's happened with this situation. You know what's funny, guys? Check this out. So we've got this tuft of grass right here, and you'll notice the grass around it has been mowed, and that's because that is tasty grass, and this is not. So the tortoises, or the turtles rather, when they come out, they are actually uh, grazing on all this grass right here. And look at this congregation we got, these little lunatics that kind of hung out. And by the way, I am kind of keeping an eye on the fence as well. But um, look at all of my grandis. These guys come out when it rains like this and they just spread out and start chomping down on all the grasses that they like to eat. So pretty cool stuff. Um, I love kind of seeing them like this. These are really, really big guys right now. Uh, just beautiful, large, grandis hanging out right here in this pond. Beautiful. Now look at the face on this guy. Come here, grandis. He almost looks like a yellowhead temple turtle, but he's not. It is definitely a grandis. We used to have the yellowhead temple turtles here, but they did not do well as these guys um, they were brought in from a farm in Hong Kong where they were actually confiscated from the food markets. And unfortunately, a lot of them weren't doing well. And this was back in 2010. And then we had one of the coldest winters on record. So they just did not do good here. So we had to move out the ones that survived and uh, the ones that didn't make it, unfortunately, that was a big loss and a bummer for us, man. But uh, you gotta really keep trying when you're trying to keep these animals from facing extinction. And uh, there you go. So kind of a sad story. But anyway, what I need to do is I need to go grab um, some extra wire and I need to make sure that I just lengthen this a little bit. So I'm gonna get on that, but oh, look at this. The sulcatas tend to hide on days like this. It's not exactly prime basking weather. And they're really not hungry either. And that's the cool thing about reptiles is they can slow their metabolisms down and they can wait out these kind of periods of bad weather. Here are a couple that are out. Some might be trying to get a couple of bits of grass. I don't know, but that gal right there, she's been with me since 2005. 
and so has Brutus right here. What's up, big boy? So they're trying to soak up any kind of solar radiation they can get, but it's just not going to be a lot. So most of them are actually hanging out inside of their house, trying to stay dry. Now, what happens is a lot of rain will come down, and uh, this is what I feed them on, my little plywood here so it looks a little unsightly because the rain has moved it and it just looks like wood sitting in the middle so i'll probably come over here put that up before uh since they're not going to get fed today or tomorrow uh we'll just put that up and make it look nicer i've got some palm fronds that i need to pick up Sheesh, there's a lot of work to do all right here is the radiated torches you know what else i need to do here's the wire mesh that was sent to me from my friend's knit wire so they sent me the the, this is the old mesh that is too thin, but it's just been kind of sitting on its pallet. I need to move this in the next day or two and kind of get it out of the driveway because it just looks like crap. And then uh, I want to show you, they did send me a better, uh, more heavy duty wire. It's uh, about three meters. I believe it's three, it's, it's uh, two, 1.5 meters. I don't know, I don't know meters. It's almost about three and a half foot, but this is the actual heavier gauge stuff that we're gonna put on that iguana enclosure. Enclosure, there was a little New York accent there, enclosure. We're gonna do the enclosure. Once it gets, um, you know, what we found is there's some trouble with uh, the lumber right now. It's very, very expensive. So I'm waiting on that lumber to go down. Uh, here's a little radiated tortoise just hanging out. All right, so these guys are gonna be a little bit less active than they normally are. Um, it is, it's little, when I say chilly guys, it's about, it's about 77 degrees. So it's not freezing. So they are moving about actually over there. It looks like we're about to see some mating. I think that's gonna happen. And uh, here's a cool instance right now. Look at this, look at this. Asian box turtle, I think is gonna start using, using this little tortoise hide. Hey, what's up, pal? This one was just in the water in our little stream built by Modern Designs Aquascaping. And I uh, love these guys. These guys actually love when it rains. A lot of the aquatic turtles, when it rains, they tend to come out and wander around. So here we go. Look at this, they are using it. So there's a couple in there already. So that's good to know. These guys have started to figure out that this might be a good place to kind of hide. Here's another one hanging out in the water right now, which is awesome to see. Uh, these guys are from Southeast Asia and they actually are really, really uh, aquatic. So many people years ago would keep these as our North American box turtles. And unfortunately they did very poorly in captivity because these are an aquatic species. You could treat them just like a red eared slider, but where they spend most of their time are in the rice paddies, which are very shallow. And as you can see, this guy's hanging out in the shallow water, just relaxing, but they will venture into these deeper spots. So uh, very cool. And another thing that's interesting is they do hang out underneath this rock right here. Oh, there's a couple right there underneath this hollow rock. Oh gosh. So there's that. Uh, oh, you know what we gotta do? We gotta check this out. Our aquascape skimmer here sometimes. Uh-huh, look at this. This is what I gotta do, people. What do we got here? What do we got? Did you get caught in there? I think this one just actually likes to go in there. This is my Badiger borneensis, really pretty Asian turtle. Uh, I have Badiger affinis, the Royal River Terrapin, and they are out in the back and um, they are huge. I got a female that's pushing 100 pounds. So depending whether this is a male or a female, uh, this turtle here, very aquatic species from Southeast Asia. This is the Northern River Terrapin, Badiger borneensis. Um, they are really, really uh, aquatic, strong swimmers. And I've talked about them a lot because they are a turtle that is under threat of extinction. In fact, most Asian turtles are because of food. Uh, they grow big, so people want to eat them. And uh, of course, there's always, it's with these guys, it's mostly the food trade. It's not necessarily the pet trade for these. So go ahead, watch how good they swim though. Very, very nice. Uh, so this aquascape pond's looking good. We cleaned it out a few weeks ago. I'm happy to see it's maintaining the clarity. Uh, you know, I inoculated it with bacteria. It's looking really good. So very happy with this pond. Actually, all my ponds I'm very happy with because all I have to do is a little bit of maintenance, maybe once or twice a year. Up north, you only have to do it once a year because 
you have winter kind of giving it a break but here in florida we always have uh good weather now guys check out check this out check this out pink belly side neck making use of every aquatic habitat in the front yard including the bio falls here is that awesome i mean she's just hanging out in the bio falls kind of just looking around there's snail in here she can nibble on some snail um it's just really cool to see my aquatic turtles have so many different um little micro habitats or places to move around and uh be interesting in. and and that's why we keep these animals right you get to see them display all their behaviors and that's why i absolutely love having these aquascape ecosystem ponds because the key is it's an ecosystem it, it's you don't have to worry about any of the um you know chemicals or things like that to keep up the appearance of the pond you just kind of plant little papyrus and we've got different fountain grasses and life just starts to happen here we even have this old skull and if you look there's actually little bees growing out of the skull so it's really cool um it's just really cool to see this kind of take on a life of its own after having it for almost three years now i've had this pond so we've got frogs in it we've got um i found scarlet snakes here black racers there are basilisk running around and of course all the curly tails and all of the annals uh, are out here as well so I, I i just love how life takes hold in these little ponds um it's one of my favorite places i love uh, actually my whole yard is my favorite place i just love kind of hanging out and kind of searching and looking for everyone so that's cool seeing that turtle in the biofalls let's wander over here let's go see sophia's pond hey look at this more things happening i mean everything is on the menu here this is why i don't freak out about feeding my animals because i'm here uh planting and tending to my garden and this radiated tortoise is having a little bit of a nibble on some of this fern and they they'll they'll nibble on some of these little weeds they just kind of do their thing and wander around nicely this is a little bit of elephant ear that she certainly has gotten to so that's pretty cool uh but i love it if there's always a surprise waiting for me when you keep your animals in this fashion uh so this is the goal guys if some of you are young people uh, maybe you live at home with your parents this is something that is totally attainable to you man you guys will one day own your own home maybe you'll live somewhere where you can put the animals outdoors um i just think it's great i think it's the best way for these animals to live so good deal baby Woo! all right very cool radiated tortoise an endangered species from madagascar that is just doing so well in captivity here in the united states and well represented and we have a nice stable captive population of those animals so i don't think they'll be going extinct anytime soon and this is one of the ways people like myself that are involved there you go making more radiated tortoises people uh private people like myself working in concert with uh zoos and different organizations to keep these species from going extinct and provide people with just quality captive raised animals if you're looking to purchase one as a pet that's the um the best way to get one of these animals you don't want to get them as an import okay and you actually can't legally get radiated tortoises as imports because they're CITES 2 animals again another of my turtles my Asian turtles here kind of just hanging out right in the um this is an Asian box turtle hanging out in the stream so you kind of see their preferred areas to hang out uh again this is sophia's pond we have a separate bio falls it's flowing into uh this little pond here all these are growing up nicely i did a trimming a few weeks back things are starting to come back you know what i need to do guys here's part of the maintenance that i have to do every once in a while i cruise over to my log and i come over here and i simply just grab some of these pine needles and i move them out okay so under here is what's called a vault and you guys saw me actually repurpose uh, one of the vault extensions from aquascape into my timor python hide it was just a very quick 
uh, a very quick fix, but I look in there, I see that the water levels are good, that the pumps are both operating nicely. We've got good suction, good flow. That's what I need. And again, another turtle, another Malaysian box turtle or Asian box turtle. I say Malaysian. How about we call them Quora Ambienensis? Another Ambo hanging out right there. So very, very good news. Animals seem happy. Let's go pop in on those lovebirds. Oh, before I fall in, I almost fell in the pond. <laughs> ah, yes, more radiated tortoise, beautiful bromeliads. I believe these are a Brazilian species of bromeliad and uh, beautiful flowers. So it's just so much fun to be here. All right, big fella, what are you doing to this little girl? What are you up to, man? Oh my God. I hope you guys figure it out. And uh, we may even have some eggs. I have to check around for eggs too. So we might have to do that as well. All right, again, just continuing on this little walkabout, making sure everyone's all right uh, in this rain. How about some of the giant tortoises? There's Darwin and Nostradamus. Hey guys, okay. And uh, you know, there's the response I like. When I walk over, they get excited. They're always happy to see me. If I weren't uh, seeing that kind of behavior, that would be something that would uh, concern me. So they, they perk up, they know that I'm their daddy. They know I bring them food. So they're kind of curious to see what I'm doing. And oh, come on, who wouldn't love to give a neck scratch to an Aldabra tortoise and watch it respond in this way. I hear something. What do I hear? Is that up there? Squirrels fighting. There's always squirrels fighting. See them lunatics? Look at these guys. There's always something happening at the camp, either with the wild animals or these beautiful animals that I got here. Now it's starting to rain again. So um, I think we're gonna, she's just not as, she's always trying to bite my hand. She's just not like Nostradamus. She's not as tactile. She doesn't necessarily like it as much, Darwin. Oh, there you go. There's a little something. There's a little something. Are you and I bonding? Oh, it's your little neck scratch. It's gotta be itchy in there, doesn't it? Oh, I love you. Now, where, pray tell, is, no, this is, I don't know if I like this angle or this situation. So why don't I get up? Okay, we'll just leave that there because, you know, these khaki pants, <laughs> they may look somewhat flowery. What are you doing? You got a nut and you don't. Well, you know what? Some people are a little bit more um, uh, industrious than others. Or some squirrels actually wind up doing the same thing. A little more industrious. Got to squirrel that away for the winter. That doesn't come to South Florida. Maybe once, twice a, twice a year. Get cold night. Um, okay. Moving along, I never worry about the elongated tortoise because these guys love high humidity. They love the cooler weather uh, and there's never an issue with them. They're one of the most bulletproof turtles and tortoises that I have. Uh, they're just always happy doing their thing. So it looks good over here. Won't spend too much time with them. Um, I will tell you this, it's been a few days and we're in the middle of egg laying season for our cherry heads. These guys again, another species that can take higher humidity so the rain doesn't really worry me with these guys hi guys you gonna come out i don't have any food for you i gotta go buy that today and i'm actually waiting on my fluker shipment to come in so i apologize so there's no real food here today for you but it's a cool day look at the pretty eyes this male came to me uh it belonged to my friend uh greg greg was a vet for disney's animal kingdom and he passed away a few years back uh, in Mozambique where he's doing work on rhinoceros, uh, some conservation work, um, just passed away unexpectedly, really sad, but super excited uh, that I have this. Greg Fleming, great guy, uh, remember that name. He was a real friend of tortoises and he was a great friend to me. Anytime I had an issue with any of my animals, all I had to do was drive up to Orlando and um, he would take care of me and help me out. But you can see just a beautiful animal that he once kept. And I'm so proud to have this animal and hopefully I'll have it for many, many years. So they're all starting to pop out now uh, as I work my way around the enclosure. They get very curious, which is one of my fun, th it's, it's so fun. I love the moss too, by the way, north facing moss, there you go. Uh, I, love, I love coming in here and checking everyone out, you know, and just seeing what they're doing. Let me see, what does this, eh, that's not it. I'm just kind of eyeballing here, folks to see if there's any eggs. Um, I'm not seeing any real, dis wait a minute. No, that's a, 
that's a nest right here but that nest was already dug um, I did also dig under there you can see the exposed earth so I don't think we have any more I'm not seeing anything that looks like nesting um, again there's Petra looking good uh, yeah everything looks to be good in there let's check on the girl just because I know we're gonna have rain and if I don't get to there she is there she is hi Petra so she's looking good too um, she's just kind of waiting it out waiting out this kind of bad weather um, which we're gonna continue to have okay how about the leprechauns all right these guys are just fantastic all the hardiness of a sulcata tortoise but all the beauty of a leopard um love these three are doing awesome very light and just beautiful markings on their shells uh if you guys didn't see the video about them a while back you should check it out i go into great depth about the hybridizing of those those guys with the sulcatas uh rather here we got a leprechauna. There's the South African leopard tortoise and the female. Let's see her, because I haven't seen her. There she is, doing what I thought she'd be doing, just kind of hanging out, staying dry underneath this Saxahatchee grass, uh, or is it Faxahatchee grass? Uh, again, other little things that happen in the rainy season. We get all these cool ferns that kind of pop out of places that kind of give the cages a really cool look. Uh, Pinky, Pinky. Where are you? I don't know where she is, but you know what? There she is, trying to sunbathe. It's not happening though, is it, dear? Mm, not happening for her. Uh, Buttercup's doing well, and uh, we're just gonna move over here. I just wanna make sure we're not gonna spend a lot of time. Actually, I may not even need to go inside the enclosure because I'm pretty sure I know what Slinky's doing there is Crazy Sophia and Stumpy shedding. Looking good, dude. Back over here, my friends, cherry heads and elongateds, I've been kind of hanging out with, keeping keeping them for them. And there's Slinks. Hey, Slinky, how you doing, bud? He looks good. If I don't want to go into the enclosure, I can just kind of walk around the outside. So here we are. Uh, the Timors look good. Here's the blackhead. All right, very nice. Got the water bowl, their new hide, and it looks like the um hog islands are actually in their little house but let's go let's go hey you want to see nugget let's see nugget let's see how he's doing on this rainy day nugget where are you nugget usually hides oh, up by this uh alocasia right here this type of plant this one uh, but i do not see him and you gotta look he likes to hang out on these things and i'm not seeing him let's move this obviously i need to straighten up some of these buckets some lilies are growing nicely where's nugget he's like the only little turtle in here and i like to see him i just want to find my nugget it's kind of like looking for a gold nugget. We're panning for, uh, there he is. There he is. Look at his little dude. Hey, what's up, buddy? There's little nugget. And this turtle is doing awesome, man. Loving the uh, earthworms I dig up and get for him. So look how tiny he is. What's up, little man? <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, but super stoked on this little find. I found this guy in Sophia's pond. So let's put him right up here. He can kind of go into there he goes all right see you nugget very good pull these down again definitely helps keep any kind of uh prey from above out i'm talking to birds of course i just leave this open so that those plants can kind of grow out you should see how these guys are growing here's one of them look at that snow leopards these are the juveniles just looking more and more beautiful every single day now where is a lot of a lot of roaches <laughs> can't help that here in florida as long as they're not in the house we're good oh there's the other one now this this next one i, I want to know what you guys think in the comments below what do you guys think of this tortoise okay 
Come here, little guy. What do you guys think? Beautiful or what? I absolutely think this guy is gonna be what would be called a stunner. They're both beautiful. They're both throwing off some light colors, but how about just the intensity of the lightness coming out of this uh, leopard tortoise, huh? Just so beautiful. I cannot believe how gorgeous that animal is. So really thrilled. And then of course, here's Leon. There's Leon, banana pectinata. Just kind of hanging about. So no issues with him. And that's it for babies I have. I don't have a lot going on. We have some eggs uh, being dropped in the ground now. But other than that, not much happening. Okay, we're going to keep wandering. I just want to make sure our friend Lumpy is okay. Now, Lumpy's probably, uh, Lumpy's probably out. Now, this is where, you know, it does get a little bit wetter here. Oh, look at this. Here's Lagatha. What's she up to? She's just kind of... Enjoying this wet weather it looks like hey girl, of course, she's from She is from um, Very tropical rainforest, so the rain's not a problem for her. She's never sitting in water all the time Hi, sweetheart. I like to talk to her. I like to just tell her what's going on. Hey girl, and she has definitely calmed down You guys have been seeing that but this is all part of that interaction being out here being available for them getting getting busy with them, uh, but not in that way, not getting busy. I mean, like, you know, kind of hanging out and letting them know you're around so they, they know that you're a part of their life. Uh, but let's find Hercules, no, Hercules up front. Uh-oh, we got trouble. Look at this, see? This is why you come out and you inspect things. Here's our new cage, right? But look who's been digging. Look at the mess you're making for me. I don't mind when you come in and he, he cleans up the weeds, okay? He trims them down. But this, this is just not cool, man. But this actually shows you guys a, a lot of uh, information here. I have wire and that wire has stopped him from going any further. Oh my God, Lumpy. But I gotta also tell you why I'm excited. If he's digging, that means that that leg right there that we went to the doctor on, Dr. Gilliam, uh, excuse me, Dr. Gillen. Good grief, why can't I say his name? Dr. Gillum from PGA Animal Clinic. Uh, it's been working and look at how happy he is. He's, he's definitely looking better. He's moving around, he's digging, which is his normal behavior, a good old lumpy. And uh, that's great. So I'm glad to see that. But at the same time, I'm annoyed because I'm going to have to come back in here and I'm going to have to fill up all this. But, you know, to be honest, it's not not really that um, urgent at the moment. The next thing I got to do is pull off all this wire here that is not up to snuff. And I'm going to replace it with the more intense and heavier gauge wire that Knit, knit Mesh uh, sent me. That Knit Wire sent me. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Um, all right, cool. All right, Lumps. Just hang out. I mean, he's got that whole thing there, but I think he decided, meh, might as well live where my food is. Uh, and of course, he did do a little dig in there, but he stopped because I had the forethought, knowing that I'm going to be putting rock iguanas in here, that I had to make sure that it was totally escape proof. And it is. Uh, this back pond is filled up. We've got the large uh, Royal River Terrapins and my two beautiful um, fly river turtles living in it. Okay, so you can see how full it gets here during the rainy season. And then, of course, we've got all of the good old red foots. There's Lego. Hey, Lego. So really good um, situation here. Pretty stoked. Everyone's happy. No flooding as of yet, but I'm sure that's going to come. Um, there are turtles using every aspect of this enclosure as was designed. They're drinking from it. They soak in this pond water. This is uh, just a really great habitat for these guys. So there they are doing their thing. All right, we're cruising up the back end of the wreck pond, which has been just fantastic. And we'll stop in and finish up with the blue iguanas. There they are, the blues. All right. And uh, you know what? The female, she's out right here. And she looks good. Pitcher plants 
in my little bog here. We cleaned this area up a few weeks ago. It's starting to fill in nicely, uh, give it more room and stuff like that. So I'm gonna get to work. I'm gonna fix some of those things. And I hope you guys enjoyed this little walk around the camp in some rainy weather. I've done this before, uh, but you know, maybe some of you haven't seen it and some of you just like to kind of catch up and get an up-to-date view of what's going on. We've seen pretty much all the animals. Uh, it's important for us to make sure uh, that we do this every day. Um, you may see this every few months on the channel, but I do this every single day to make sure Things are operating smoothly. Um, again, you know, here is the rec pond. Before I go, you could just kind of see all the seagrass is, well, not, it's not seagrass, is it? Um, Sagittarius, I believe. I forget the name of the grass. Someone will let me know on the bottom, but it's really filled in this little stream. It's filled in this little cove, okay? I love it uh, because what is that doing? It's helping filter and oxygenate the water. And we have a bit of a ripple because of the um, rain, but look at the health of this pond. We've got beautiful lilies going. We've got plants growing in it. I'd love to get more of those uh, grasses growing in this area uh, that's all rock right now because it actually feels better on your feet when you're stepping on the grass. And I just think the greenery looks good. And anytime you can have more plant life, it's just gonna create more little habitat for fish fry, snails, and it's gonna oxygenate and filter the water. So I wanna start maybe transplanting some of this stuff behind me, start getting it in there, and then watch it spread. Uh, that's it, man. All right, the whole camp. I gotta get to work. We gotta get this uh, electric fixed, pick up those palm fronts. But do I really wanna move that wire today? I don't know. Thanks so much, guys, for joining me on this little trek around the camp. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like and subscribe. And don't forget, we're also on other platforms. We're on Facebook under Camp Kennan and Instagram under Camp Kennan. And if you like what we do here, why don't you help us out a little bit more and go on over to our Patreon page. That's patreon.com slash Camp Kennan. Thank you guys all so much. I'm going to get to work before the sky falls. See ya.